Okay. So I'm going to talk about Suzy AI web bots. So all of you must be familiar with chatbots. So uh, let's start with an introduction of myself. So my name is Divyan Chuen Singh. Okay. Uh, I'm a full stack web developer. I have worked in front end web developing using React JS and in back end web developing using Node JS and PHP. Okay. I'm also an iOS developer. And I was student developer at Google Summer of Code 2018 with Fossasia. Okay, so and I'm uh, the, and Jack is basically the computer science club of my college. I am a cyber security sub coordinator in that. I'm pursuing b computer science and engineering at IIT Patna in India. This is my email, my website, uh, my GitHub, and my Twitter. In case you want to contact me. So let's start. So uh, we're going to start with discussing what is a chatbot because th that needs to be clear. So according to Oxford, it says that a chatbot is a computer program uh, designed to simulate conversation with human users, especially over the internet. So there are two special keywords over here. First is, uh, it is designed to simulate conversation with human users. Okay, so basically chatbot is a program with which you can talk. This is basically what it means. And especially over the internet, because uh, like uh, if, it, if you're talking it with it offline, then it's a robot, it's not a chatbot. So chatting is done online, so that is why over the internet. Now, uh, most of you must have seen Facebook bots, right? Facebook bots or kick bots or Twitter bots. Now, how do they, those bots work? They work using an APIs. So that, that is what I've written here. So let's, let's talk about, now, now how does that API thing work? So you have your uh, bot and what happens, like if you say, how are you to, to that bot, you ask the question. That question goes to the servers of the service. Let's say the bot is on Facebook. So it goes to the servers of Facebook and then that, Response is fetched for, for the for your query and then it's, it's sent back to you. So all of this is done using APIs, the uh, request and the response. So with Facebook, the most famous type of bots are the singers. So like, uh, let's say I'm a singer, I have my songs, then I can create a chatbot uh, which the users will use to uh, listen to my songs. They can say that I want to hear the latest song of your that you release in 2019. So that's what they can do. Also games. games uh, game chatbot can also be created using Facebook API. So with that, what happens is that uh, it, they are role-playing games. Like uh, a situation will be, will be given, you'll make a decision, then the next situation. So all of this is done using chatbots. Uh, you can also use Kick API to create Kick chatbots and Twitch. Twitch is an online video streaming uh, gaming platform. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so now types of chatbots. There are basically three types of chatbots. So the first one is a support bot. Support bot is built to master single domain. So sub support bot, as the name suggests, it, it is there to provide you support. So if I'm providing you support, you don't need support for everything, right? You need support for some specific thing. Like if the chatbot is on my website, on my website, so you need support for that website. So the chatbot, the chatbot should basically know everything about that website. So that is it. It should be master of a single domain. Example, knowledge about a company. Second thing, it needs to have a personality and context awareness. Now this basically means that the way in which the chatbot talks or means the chatbot replies needs to be similar to the way that the that the company is. means. Let's say that the company is really professional. It's a very big company. So the chatbot cannot talk in a very frank way. It's, it needs to be professional. That is what it means. The third thing is it should be able to uh, answer wide range of FAQ type question. So uh, uh, if I'm going to, uh, if I'm talking to a support chatbot, it means that I want it, I want help with something. So I'm either confused or I'm really frustrated. So that is what this is for. So I, I will ask really difficult or really weird question in a really weird way. So it should be able to answer FAQs of a wide range. Okay. Uh, and the final thing is, yeah, this is the final thing is really important because uh, I have given two examples. First is I want to sell XYZ. How do I add my account number? And the second query, I sold XYZ two days ago and I cannot see money in my account. So there are two keywords here, sell and sold. Chatbot should be able to differentiate between these two keywords. That is really important so that it can know best which type of response to show to which type of query. So this is the first type of chatbot. The second is skills chatbot. This is completely different from support chatbot. So skills chatbots are basically, they are master at some particular skills. So they don't need to be uh, like a very broader case like the support chatbot, they just need like, it says perform specific tasks on specific commands. So self-explanatory. Second is speech functionality is preferred by the users. Okay, so uh, the examples makes makes it clear. It says turn off the lights of my bedroom. 
uh, I don't necessarily want to type this to my chatbot. So that's why speech is usually preferred in this one. And it needs a hotbot to start listening. If there is a speech functionality, it means that I want the chatbot to start listening at something, at some word that I say. Let's, like the Apple uses Hey Siri, so that is a hot word. Assistant chatbot. So these are the this, these come somewhere in the middle between the skill chatbot and the support chatbot. They provide both type of things. So Apple, Siri, Google Home, Amazon, Alexa, Cortana, all of these are assistant chatbots. Okay, so these were the three kinds of chatbots. Moving on. Now before we add start chatbots to our website, something needs to be clear that why is there a need for the for this? Okay, so I found this fact on the internet that by 2020, over 85% of consumer interactions will be handled without a human. It's already 2019, and this fact was around four years old, so we're pretty close to that now. Okay, so second is, thing is, simultaneous processing of multiple requests from users. Let's say that I have a chatbot over the web, and at a particular time, 50,000 customers are there on my website, which needs some kind of help. So if I want to provide help to, to all of them and I'm, and I'm thinking about providing help using a chat window, so I would, so for that I need 50,000 uh, people in my call center who would be there on the computer and they will help all the customers. So that is a lot of investment. I can easily escape all of that using a chatbot because it can simultaneously uh, handle requests from all those users. Okay. And the third point is also that only. Uh, remove the need for humans to live chat with the users. Finally, it provides a better experience than FAQ and contact form. FAQ and contact form are usually boring. We don't read everything in detail. We just skip or, or just see the keywords. Uh, a much more interesting thing is to talk with the chatbot. So they provide assistance quickly and efficiently. Okay, The chatbots can be programmed to be entertaining. Okay, FAQs can't be programmed to be entertaining, but chatbots can be. Uh, they can be small jogs around. Uh, they can be small jokes with the answers. Okay. Third thing is, they give users to they give users talk to which they gives they give uh, sorry give users chance to talk without being judged. So this is uh, something that most of the people who are who feel complex in in talking to phone on, on talking on phone they this is what they face. Like they would think that uh, the person I'm talking to he will think. That I'm not like let's say I'm on a website I'm not able to use that website and if I contact a person and I tell him that I'm not able to use his website he would probably think that he's stupid he cannot use his website but chatbot would not think that so this is one thing and chatbot sparks curiosity of people they would love to explore its ability so important thing finally let's move to Suzy AI now that the basic things are covered so the session before me was also on Suzy AI so I think that most of you now already know what Suzy AI is all about. It's a personal assistant, an open source personal assistant. Okay, so it has a lot of uh, functions. That is this music playback, making to-do list, setting alarms, streaming podcasts, playing audiobooks, etc. It also provides weather and traffic information and other information. All of this information is provided using APIs. Okay. Now, so uh, I built this. Suzy AI web bot during my GSOC period. So when the that time started, we didn't have this chatbots on the Suzy. So we had this idea that we want chatbots and we want them that the chatbot should use Suzy as the person who will reply to the user queries. So we needed some idea like how do we start with this? Like how Suzy works is basically like there are skills. Okay, so if I have uh, if I have a query, so the response for that query will be written in the skill. So the response is fetched from the skill, and then it is displayed to the user. This is how basically Suzy works. Okay, so and all the skills are public. So I needed some way for those skills to be private because I like, think about it this way: all the skills are public, so you can see all the skills. Like if 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 the response for hi is hello, I'm Suzy. So everyone will be able to know the response for hi is hello, I'm Suzy. But let's say that I am the owner of a company and I want the reply to hi to be hello how are you doing welcome to my website i want this response and i don't want anyone else to know about it because it is of my own chatbot so we need that type of thing that the skills should be private that was our first main challenge okay so suzy replies to user query on the basis of suzy skills that's uh, just what i told a skill defines how a particular query or a type of query should be answered okay so i said a particular query because you can just uh, type in the query, uh, you can just hard code the responses for the query and also type of query because you can also 
do API calls with your with the queries, whatever the queries of the users are, you can do API call. Like if they are if you are trying to fetch weather information, then we cannot co hard code weather information. So it will be using an API call. For chatbot, we needed these three things: a skill to define how user queries should be answered. So there would be a skill which would define the user queries, which would, which would define the responses to the user queries. And the skill should be private, just like I said. I don't want the other people to know how my chatbots are. Uh, uh, how my chatbots are functioning. And the final thing is that it should apply only to this particular chatbot. Okay, so this is also really important. Currently, if there is any skill, like if there is any skill on Suzy, that skill is applied to the whole Suzy. Like if I add a new skill, it will be applied to the whole Suzy platform. Like on the web client, the Android, the iOS, it will be applied everywhere. But I don't want that with my chatbot because if there is a skill for my own chatbot, then it should be applied to only my own chatbot, not the rest of the Suzy. So that was also a main challenge. And final point, we cannot do this with the previous implementation, so we needed something new. So that new thing was private skills. So this is a table that basically shows the difference between private skills and pub public skills. So public skills, it applies to Suzy. Just like I said, public skills apply to all of, applies to all of the Suzy. And the private skill they on, that only replies that only applies to your particular chatbot. It doesn't apply to all of the Suzy. Okay. Second thing is that public skill can be viewed or editing edited by anyone, but that is not the case with private skill. Only the owner of the chatbot or the creator of the chatbot can edit or delete those private skills. Final thing, public skills contain responses of user queries. Huh. Public skill con contains responses of user queries, but that is not. But private skill contains way more than that. In case of public skill, we just we just needed the responses for user queries. We don't need anything else because all the theme setting or all the other things they are all already hard coded or they are already in the settings of the web client or the Android client. But in the case of chatbots, we needed uh, way more settings like. We needed the theme of the chatbot. Let's say that I want my chatbot to be green. I don't want it to be plain white. So where should I store that green color? We, I need to store that green color somewhere, right? So that is in the skill only. And also, let's say that I want my chatbot to use only the skills that I created. I don't want it to use the rest of the Suzy skills. How do I save that setting? Where do I save that setting? That is also done in the private skill. OK, so now that the private skills, are, now that this is the private skill, that it will apply to a particular chatbot, only the Bot creator can view edit, and finally there are a lot of settings. So this is private skill, and this is the chatbot. The private skill is basically the chatbot. So now the concept was ready. Now we need to create it. So let me show you what we created. Okay, so this is a video that I uh, I screencasted this during the final evaluation of my GSOC period. I'll just show it to you. Okay, let me full screen it. Okay, so this is the main page of skills, Suzy. Uh, these are all the public skills that are displayed here. These are the skill categories. Now let's move forward. And okay, so if we click on this uh, button on the right hand side, you'll see all these options and you see the option of bot builder. So I created this bot builder which is used to create chatbots. Okay, so if we go to bot builder, you'll see this screen. In the screen, you either you have an option to either choose your own template, you, you choose the pre-coded template. Uh, template already has some basic functionalities, some basic queries and responses written in it, and let or you can also create your chatbot from scratch. So let's say that you want to create your chatbot from scratch. So these are the templates. These are the uh, these are the boards that are already saved. Let me move this. These are the boards that are already saved, and this button you use to create new chatbot chatbots. Uh, this is a pre, uh, okay, so I have this bot that uh, name of the bot is gym website bot. Let's say that I want to edit this bot. So I can simply just click on this bot and the skill, this is the skill code, skill code of the bot. So the skill code will open. I can just edit it and then edit it and then save it. Uh, this is the preview of the chatbot. Like I said now that there are, there are theme setting of the chatbot. So in this, I have a wallpaper. I have a wallpaper. So where should I save this wallpaper? Where should I save the URL of the wallpaper? So that is done in the skill, in the private skill. Okay, so the the last option that you see is draft. So draft is basically, uh, like let's say that you don't want to deploy your chatbot, you just want to leave it in the midway, so just save it as a draft and continue later on. 
currently I don't have any drafts so nothing is displayed over there okay oh you can also delete a chatbot that, that's a delete button you click on that and the chatbot will be deleted